Good morning, y'all. We will get started probably at five after the hour. But feel free to drop your name and kind of where you're joining from in the chat. You're sitting on a heating pad like I am. <laughs> awesome, Kylie, thanks for sharing. Welcome, welcome. San Francisco, got up early for this. Thanks for coming, Jasmine. I am not an early bird. You couldn't catch me doing a presentation at 9 a.m. during any day of the week. 9 p.m. maybe, but not 9 a.m. Welcome, oh, Argentina, very cool. Los Angeles, formerly SF, awesome. And if you do have any kind of pre-question or pre-show questions, feel free to drop those in too. Always like to make sure I'm hitting it what everybody wants to hear. We're gonna give it another like two to three minutes. So sit tight, grab some water. Austin, Texas, hey. Got the South in here. But I guess Argentina is technically more Southern for us, or more Northern. Hey, good morning, y'all. We will be getting started in about three minutes, but feel free to drop your name where you're joining from in the chat. And if you have any, I guess, pre-show questions, let us know. Do maybe I feel like you should have a map of all of your events and then where the participants are from, and so you can just slowly like <laughs> start tracking the global. It really presence. is like all over. We had last event we had a couple of people from Europe, and I was like, oh wow, where did okay. you find us? <laughs> Welcome newbies. Feel free to drop your name and where you're from in the chat, and if you have any questions or topics you want to make sure we hit on. I uh, always love to make sure that I'm addressing whatever you're all thinking of. London, there we go. A little late for London, a little early for SF in, on Los Angeles. Love it. New York City. Yay. Atlanta, awesome. Orange County. I always forget how big California is as a state and Texas are as states. <laughs> I mean, I'm currently in New Hampshire where it's very cold and I'm sitting on a heating pad. It's not friendly to be outside right now. Um, not my preferred zone, but where I'm at right now. Chicago, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay, I'm in Chicago too. Very cool. Welcome, welcome. Miami, I see that's the weather I want. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm jealous. Yeah, Julia, <laughs> we're, we're coming to visit you next. Okay, we're gonna give it one more minute. Nice all over the world. It's always my favorite because there's so many perspectives on this work, right? It's just not segmented. Yes, the transcript feature is turned on. If you go, depending on how big it is, it might be a triple dot and you should be able to see, uh, I believe it should say show subtitles or show transcript. Yep. It's not super intuitive to find. I apologize on behalf of Zoom. Okay, so we're about five minutes after the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining Money Talks, planning your 2022 ERG budget. Um, just a quick note before we get started, this meeting is being recorded, and then um, the live transcript um, feature is enabled. So if you go to the bottom screen and click on the three dots, you should see something that says live transcripts, um, and you should be able to turn that on for yourself. Um, but back to the event. So my name is Demay Bigbuna. Um, I am the co-founder and CMO of Chessy. Um, and before I pass it over to our amazing guest speaker, I wanted to kind of take the time to introduce our company um, for those of you who may be unfamiliar with our platform. So uh, my brother and I founded Chessy in June of 2020 after a couple of years of us working in corporate America and, you know, having our own experiences as Black Nigerian immigrants in the workplace. Um, we originally launched Chessy as kind of like a glass for minorities. Um, so we were gathering stories from diverse professionals and sharing them with job seekers in order to help them make more informed career decisions. Um, while we found this to be really impactful and we love doing that work, it became challenging for us to organically obtain these stories. Um, so in March of this year, we kind of made a pivot. So 
we knew that we still wanted to help minorities in the workplace. Um, and after conversations with DEI professionals like yourselves, um, we found that we could do that by focusing on employee resource groups. We realized that these groups are powerful tools for fostering inclusion um, and retaining diverse talent, but oftentimes ERGs are underfunded and under-resourced. Um, so we created a software that helps DEI managers um, track membership, events, engagement of your ERGs, um, and then take them to from intent to impact. So we also have an ERG community. It's a place for ERG leads to, um, to share press practices, to network and to gain helpful resources. Um, so we'll be sending out all that information after the event, but I just want to kind of give you guys some context. Um, so now that I've done the shameless plug, let's get back to the content for the day. Um, I'm going to pass it over to our speaker, Jess Osro. She is the co-founder and COO um, of The Rise Journey. Um, she has a wonderful presentation to share, and then we will be doing kind of an open Q&A at the end um, of this session. But if you have any questions while she's speaking, feel free to drop them in the chat. She'll try and answer them um, throughout. So Jess, I'll pass it over to you. Awesome. Before we get started, I'd love to throw it in the chat. Feel free to unmute yourself. If you leave today with one piece of information or if one question answered, what would that be? What would make this next hour feel like a success? And it could be a fact, it could be a kind of a topic. Would love to just kind of have you throw that into the chat or unmute yourself and jump in. Buy and show ROI, great. I can definitely touch on that. Uh, you're going to be an easy crowd to please. Almost a standard budget or template of some sort for ERGs to think through spending. Great. Anika will definitely go through that. Cool. Well, feel free to jump in at any point. I will be monitoring the chat. <clears throat> just FYI, I have a monitor to my left. So if you see me looking over there, it's just because my presentation's bigger and I might be going blind. Not literally. I just have very good vision. And with that, I will present my screen. Uh, there we go. It's going. So ERG budget. Um, so just quick agenda for today, you know, talking about do you, do you need a budget? Are you, how do you ask for one? Do you have one? Segmenting out focus areas, how much to allocate, who should be involved in this conversation, tracking and a postmortem. I'm gonna quickly talk about a report state of the ERG. And then um, do maybe is gonna send out this deck and there's a ton of resources in the back of the deck, links, quotes, all sorts of things that we're not gonna go through in this presentation, but just additional research I've done that I wanna make sure gets in your hands. Um, so ERGs, if you have one, they need a budget. And this is, as Kyle pointed out, you know, talking about buy-in. If you make room for this in your organization, there needs to be budget. You know, people need the ability to start with something and we go through that. Um, if it's the first time you're asking for budget, don't shoot for the moon. Just start with, hey, can we get $1,000 per ERG? Just getting something in there allows you to, every time the budgeting cycle goes around again, you can ask for more. You can have data that proves ROI. And we'll go into some of those templates and ideas of how you can structure the budget so that you can show that ROI. Um, and then if you're updating or revising a previous budget, yay, congratulations, you have one. It's probably time to segment more and more in detail. And um, we're going to go through this, but really, again, the more detail you can have, the better ROI, return on investment you can show and or what is and isn't working. <clears throat> There's always things that don't work as well. And it's really important to note those as well as what is working. Um, if you don't have a budget or you wanna augment your budget, um, think about and talk with leaders about, is there spend that can be reallocated? Look at last year's budget, <clears throat> excuse me, and what wasn't spent, you know, did HR have extra budget that they thought they were gonna spend and didn't? Did the tech team have extra budget? You know, what can be reallocated from different areas? I'm um, thinking about, is the ERG budget part of a departmental responsibility? Is it under HR? Is it under DEI? Or does it kind of live in its own land? So really figuring out where it lives. Um, is this part, budget part of a larger budget? Oftentimes they are under a DEI budget, but not necessarily segmented out as ERG budget specifically. It might just be under DEI. So getting it its own kind of line item or own box. And then what are the, D, the ERG goals and expectations? and working with your ERG leads to say, okay, we want to achieve X, Y, and Z. And that means we wanna have two speakers that are external speakers and host one internal event. The average speaker cost is X and the average internal cost is Y. Therefore we anticipate needing $5,000 for this quarter. And so really working backwards. And we're gonna talk through that a little bit more. And I realized that I can't see the chat right now. Here we go. Um, great, ERG planning strategically about spending in the future. 
Um, a template will be fabulous. Well, you will be pleasantly surprised. There are templates coming um, and worksheets coming and you maybe can share more information about the tool in the email. Uh, and plus one of the ways to compensate for what ERG with leaders awesome. And I just did something, okay, great. So talking about segmentation, I'm probably gonna now say this word segmentation about a thousand times. So I apologize, I get stuck on a keyword and then it never ends. Um, so why do you do it? Some of the pretty obvious, it brings clarity to how the money is being spent rather than just doing it as a lump. Um, you can connect the spend directly to goals and outcomes, which events are more popular, which speakers would do the best ROI, who attended more, et cetera, et cetera. Um, transparency, um, I don't know all about your organizations, but previous organizations I worked for, budgets were not transparent. It was very hard to figure out who spent what, where, if somebody over here spent something and somebody over here spent something, I never had any insight. It was only what I had spent on. Um, compare and contrast with other ERGs. If you're segmenting even down to that level, which you should, you know, does the LGBTQIA plus community have a different spend and a different return on investment than the women's group or than the black culture group. So really being able to compare best practices between groups is a really great way to, you know, again, ask for more money in the future. And then how does money contribute or not contribute to the goals? When you think about ERGs, a lot of times you're doing internal work that don't require any budget. Are those most effective? And if they are, you don't need money for those, but maybe you need money for something else. So really figuring out what role money plays in that, if a, if a role at all. Good check on this. Um, so for budget segmentation, we're gonna share kind of two strategies. The first one is four C's. Um, this is a fairly well-known structure. If you Google the four C's ERG budget, you're gonna find a ton of resources on it. Um, the first two C's are career. So when you think about different ways of spending, career, the employee's career, could go L&D, there's a number of ways to think about it. Um, when you think about this budget, it can often overlap and think of that Venn diagram with L&D budget, if there is L&D budget. You know, figure out what is L&D own, what is ERG own? Is L&D responsible for DEI training or is the ERG responsible for that training? And so depending on where that money sits, you might separate it in different ways or set different expectations. Um, can the ERG support the L and D function, or are they doing it on their own? And does the uh, does the ERG need to spend that money to do that? Um, are there ways of sharing and enhancing careers that don't require money? Can you build an inter internal mentorship program? So there's a lot of different ways, but career is the first C. Thinking about community, um, this can be both internal community, the constituents of the ERG, but also the external community that you're supporting. So thinking about a CSR or corporate social responsibility strategy. Are there any other community groups, um, community groups for CSR or similar? Um, at a previous organization, we had a different volunteer group that was not associated with our CSR strategy, but the ERGs would often partner with that group. And are there already initiatives happening? If there's already initiatives happening, do they have budget? Is that, is that budget gonna get reallocated to the ERGs? So there's a lot of kind of swapping and looking at these different places. Um, but it's really important to say like, where is their overlap? And if there's overlap, separate it so there isn't, or there's clear responsibilities. Okay, the ERGs will take this part of CSR and the CSR budget will do all donations. So just really separating it out and segmenting it out. The other two Cs are commerce. So thinking about business impact, this is often the area that gets lost in translation when it comes to ERGs. Um, one of the biggest, the best examples I give is Pepsi, However many years ago, again, you can Google Pepsi ERG case study. Um, they worked with their Latinx ERG to do marketing and product sales in Latin America, which they hadn't had historically good sales on or good product sales on. And they like 10X their sales within a year because they brought in this community that understood the community, understood the language, they understood what would market well to them. And so leveraging your ERGs for that can be really helpful. Often commerce doesn't need as big of a budget because other departments will pitch in and or it's about bringing ERG members into conversations. It's about inviting them. It's about saying, hey, can you attend this user experience interview we wanna make sure, or can you help us get a diverse user experience you know, group of people to interview? Um, but thinking about how does product and tech and or other business focused units get input on new potential customers. Customers, clients, community, all sorts of, you know, anything business related, depending on the type of business you have, Leveraging your ERGs as part of that conversation can be huge for sales, huge for revenue, whether you're nonprofit or for-profit. And then do you even ask them currently? If you don't currently ask your ERGs, starting point, hey, can an ERG representative join your monthly product meeting? You know, it doesn't have to be 100%. 
It can start really light and then grow as you figure out niches and ways to get involved. And then culture. And uh, this is the one that ERGs are most known for, um, raising cross-cultural competence, you know, bringing together their group. Um, again, looking at what LND, DEI, or HR are working on, depending on there might be one person for all of those things, there might be multiple people. So really looking at their plans and using the ERGs as a support, those groups should direct down and the ERGs should support up. Um, it shouldn't be the ERGs necessarily saying, oh, we expect this, that, and the other thing, but really working as a partnership. So then, again, looking at who has been responsible previously. In a previous life, I was the head of L&D for a health tech startup. I would go to, to the ERGs and say, okay, what content is important to you? What do you need support on? What do the different teams need support on? And so leveraging their thoughts and opinions, but that budget still came from my budget as my role, but they had other events that weren't in the L&D function that did support that culture piece. And where can the ERGs partner? Again, there's some repetitive pieces, but where can they partner versus starting from scratch? Um, often ER, ERG leads will get stuck in and DEI leads will get stuck in this kind of, okay, well, we can do this or we can do that. And then it becomes an infinite loop of you could or you might instead of just saying, okay, we're going to start somewhere. And so same with the budget, just start somewhere, get a dollar amount on there. Same with initiatives. And we'll talk about that a little bit too. Any thoughts, questions, concerns? Disagreements, I love a good disagreement. I'm all about that. Happy to disagree in real time. Cool, we'll keep going. Uh, so an additional way to think about in, instead of the four C's or in addition to the four C's. So something that's really, you can do really nicely is have the four C's and then have subcategories for that or vice versa. And again, these are just ideas. These are not the end all be all. Every organization is unique. So just keep in mind that this can be a starting point and then next year can be like, actually, we need to change this or we need to add a fifth pillar or we actually don't care about brand and recruitment at all. So, you know, this is a starting point, but there is no one answer. And that's something I feel about all ERGs in general. Um, so similar to the four C's, um, I suggest this more for tech companies and tech startups in that realm, um, which is more of my background. Um, but thinking about tech product and consumer, again, bringing the ERGs into that conversation you might say, we only want the leads, or can we have a small group of volunteers within each ERG? It doesn't have to be every ERG, all the groups. Um, it's about creating new audiences. If you have a product, who you know who's buying that product? Where could you do improvement on that? You know, If you don't have a lot of Black customers and you have a Black e culture ERG or Black ERG, bring them in. What a great opportunity. And you know that's about sales. So when you think about what budget you might give them, what is the ROI of the sales they're bringing in? So thinking about the counterparts of what they're helping with. It's also often a pretty dramatic exp uh, ex expansion of revenue. Um, brand and recruitment, uh, this can get touchy because recruitment often gets, uh, for lack of a better phrase, they get shit on a lot about DEI initiatives and diversity initiatives. Uh, it is really hard and it is really competitive out there. And so having your ERG support, again, versus dictating can be really helpful in partnering with recruitment and saying, okay, we wanna recruit more black candidates in the engineering department. Okay, ERGs are gonna research some great diversity job boards, but brand, but recruitment needs to get budget for it. Or does that budget come from the ERGs? So again, figuring out where that budget sits, ERGs can support spend in a different budget versus them spending it themselves. Um, but it really is about having representation. You know, if you have a whole bunch of white folks on your leadership team, don't use the one token, you know, and I'm using black because I'm looking at you maybe. <laughs> and that, so that's, that's the demographic that's coming to mind. But you know, don't use the one token black person, which should be pretty obvious. Um, but when you look at re when you might rebrand, when you might update your values, when you might refresh your jobs page, bring your ERGs in on that. Make sure that they feel like they're a part of that conversation because that will help determine belonging later on in the process. If you leave them out entirely and you create all these new values, they're gonna most likely be like, well, this doesn't apply or this doesn't make sense or how does this relate to me? So bringing them on earlier in the process, it doesn't mean that they have to own the process but just having that conversation. Um, this is especially important with the jobs page, thinking about your EEOC policy. Um, do you have the standard, we don't discriminate? Or do you say, we are actively looking to hire people with disabilities. We are actively open to offering you know, accessibility needs during the interview process. We are specifically trying to get X, Y, and Z. So thinking about being proactive with your language versus reactive with your language. And ERGs are really great at helping be that proactive voice. The other two pillars in this um, are internal culture, very similar. Um, make sure that this isn't limited to celebrations. You know, we have um, Native American Native American History Month, Indigenous Heritage Month. I'm not quite sure on the phrasing this month. 
in November, you know, don't just expect them to do something for the month and be done with it or educate just for the month. Really think about the annual. Black History Month is coming up for RISE. We're getting a lot of requests. Oh, what, what speakers do you have for Black History Month? What content do you have? That's cool and that's great. And we're working with a lot of ERGs when they're Black ERGs, but don't relegate them just for that one time period. You know, figure out how is it Black culture all year long or Black History Month all year long. Think about how they can support in other areas. Think about that intersectionality. How can ERGs cross and work together to create intersectional events. Um, internal culture for me is really about providing equitable support. So what does it look like to have ERGs look at your internal policies? What does it look like when they go into your um, performance review and say, hey, actually this language is really biased. Can we change it to this? Or we'd like to make some suggestions. Bringing those voices in is invaluable. I am a straight, white, cisgendered, heterosexual female. I have a very specific perspective and I've worked in HR my entire life at this point. Jumebe is gonna have a very different perspective on performance reviews than I will, just purely based on her background, based on her, you know, where she's worked, where she went to school. So if she was the lead of an ERG, bringing her into that process allows me to have a diverse perspective or more of a diverse perspective than finding somebody from the dis disabled community and finding somebody from the Latinx community, so on and so forth, invaluable. Um, we had a question in the chat. How do you have leaders engage in brand slash recruitment enhancement while avoiding tokenization of folks? Awesome and difficult question. Um, I think you talk transparently about it. Um, I, will, I will speak on behalf of the monolith of white folks. Um, there is a light, lot of white fragility. There is a lot of white guilt, um, and especially from a lot of white male leaders. Again, I live in the startup realm, so that's where my head is generally at. But it's about saying, what does inclusion actually look like here? If we only have one black person, that's not it could be inclusion, they could be feel like they belong, they could be very inclusive, but that's not diversity. So really thinking about, you know, I would say diversity is just numbers. Diversity is right now on my screen, I see one black person and I am a white person. That's diversity, it's numbers. Equity, making sure that people, you're meeting people where they're at, you know, is it's not just equal access to opportunities, but equitable access. Inclusion is, you know, can they, you know, the, the Oh my gosh, I'm so bad um, with quotes, but you know, diversity is being, you know, it's being asked to the dance versus dancing. So inclusion is being able to really be in that room. And then I actually add belonging and accessibility. I call it DEBA. And belonging is really the impact of inclusion. You do inclusive processes or inclusive, you know, policies, but belonging is when that person can come in and like do what they do and do it the way that they feel comfortable, the way that there's not code switching or these other pieces. And then accessibility, thinking about accessibility from the framework of, Everybody does work differently. Everybody does their best work differently. You know, for me, I'm currently sitting at my standing desk, but I also have a treadmill because for me, when I walk and move, when I used to be in recruiter land, I would often pace the office because I think better when my blood is pumping. Do maybe, and sorry, I'm picking on you to maybe because you're right there for me. Um, might really like to be in a very small content space with like noise canceling headphones. So when you think about an office space, we already, an office, traditional office space isn't going to accommodate both of us to do our best work. So when you think about that accessibility piece, but Courtney, going back to your question, how do you have leaders engage in that? You say, okay, what do we want? You know, your leaders might not want to be diverse. That's a very real reality. And if they don't, that's a different question. But thinking about asking them what they want as part of the brand and recruitment process and really getting down to that. And once you have what they want, saying, okay, here's a couple of proposed steps, or I'm going to go back and I'm going to build a proposal to get what you as my leader want. And then you say, okay, it's gonna take, our ERG is doing X, Y, Z. It's gonna take this budget. So working backwards, and I talk about working backwards later, is really the best. And ultimately, if you can get quotes from them, like record that meeting, get those quotes and say, you know, leader X says, we want a diverse workforce. You say, well, what does diversity mean to you? They might say, well, not just black and white people. We want a bunch of people. Say, okay, can you define that more? Does it mean four or more people in the workplace, five or more people in the workplace, so on and so forth. There's a lot of different ways, but ultimately going immediately to what they want. Everybody wants to feel like their needs are met, being met and especially leadership, diving right into their needs is a great way to start. Um, and then L&D. Um, L&D is a vital part of culture. It is, you know, could be mentorship conversations. It could be giving somebody money to take a course, go off and get a degree, whatever. It's a very expansive category. Um, a lot of organizations don't have a dedicated DEI professional. So often ERGs will take on that responsibility. So if you don't have an L&D person and they are taking on that responsibility, make sure you're giving them accurate amount of budget, just as you would an L&D person. We say, really the minimum should be like, if you're paying an L&D person $100,000 in New York City, that should be the minimum budget for L&D work then. 
because normally you would be hiring a person and giving that person budget. So what can an ERG group do or ERGs do with $100,000 when they're thinking about L&D? All of a sudden you're giving them real opportunity to make real change. Any questions? Keep going. Allocation, woo, all sorts of fun things. So there are three main ways I think about ERG budget allocation. One is a lump sum. We are gonna give our ERGs $100,000, which wouldn't that be a dream? There's per ERG, we have five ERGs, we have $100,000, each ERG is gonna get $20,000. We're thinking about it as a per person. Okay, we have 200 people in our company, we wanna spend $5 a month on every person for ERG work, and I don't do math in my head and figure out that math out, and I show you a little bit later some examples of some math. So thinking about it as a per person, so that everyone is getting a, like a little piece of the pie, ideally. Again, working backwards, what would you like your ERGs to achieve? Thinking about some of those goals and some of those metrics of what you want them to achieve. Your organization may lean really heavy on the product side, which again, might need less budget versus if you're leaning really hard on the brand and recruitment side, it's probably gonna need more budget. Or if you're leaning on the L&D side, way more budget. So really working backwards from what you expect from them and what your outcomes should their outcomes should be to figure out what that budget is. Um, Again, thinking about internal events and community and internal education might need a lower budget versus if you're bringing in external support, speakers, consultants, going to be a higher budget. Um, so jumping into some um, real time, what's going on in the real world, um, I am currently working on a state of the ERG report. It will be, fingers crossed, published um, the week of the 15th, and we'll get a link sent out um, for all of you as well. Um, as part of this, I did research on our ERGs getting budget, are the leads being compensated? It's a very long report. There's a ton of resources in it. I'm very proud of it. Um, this was about budget specifically in 2020 of the 73 respondents. Um, you can see here, 90% said their ERGs were given a budget, 10% no. This year, the numbers changed, but dramatic increase in the number of respondents were 71% approximately said yes, 19, 20% said no, and 10% said other. Um, a lot of times the other was, well, it's our DEI committee, or we give them some budget, but it's kind of ad hoc. So it wasn't a clear yes or no, like they got budget, but they weren't necessarily given budget initially. So kind of looking at that spread. Um, it's interesting to see the change. Some of the other data I'm gonna show next and or in that report really show the increase in awareness about ERGs, what their impact is potentially. I talk a lot about compensation of ERG leads and different ways you can think about that. Um, but ultimately, you know, this is about retention. This is about engagement. This is about belonging. And these are really hard things to measure. Um, a great way to measure some of these or ask ERGs is if you do an engagement survey, annual or twice annually, you know, are there specific questions that you say, okay, we think the ERGs can impact. Do you feel like you belong at organization X? We wanna see that number go up and we're, we're saying, hey, ERGs, we expect you to do a certain number of events in terms of impacting this number. So thinking about those with budget as well. Um, and then, um, looking at actual budget numbers, and I'm going to look over here because, again, this text is really small and this is my monitor. Um, the actual budget for ERGs, and this was for all ERGs collectively, not individual ones, the spread is pretty far. Some of them as much as $20,000, and it goes down from there. Um, in the report, I do show the comparison of how much budget is given to the based on the number of ERGs an organization has, so you can math, math that out, uh, but that did not fit on the slide. Um, and then for 2021, you can see that the numbers are starting to shift higher. They're starting to be more of a, except for that there is no budget for our ERGs. Um, so there really is a widespread, and I will say there was no correlation between organization size and budget size. I was really expecting the bigger the organization, the bigger the budget, that was not the case. Um, what this tells me and, and my team with doing the analysis is there is, again, is no one right answer except for me, it's getting budget. That is the right answer. Get budget. You have ERGs, they need budget, period, end of story. And then figuring out ways to prove that ROI. Any questions or thoughts on these? Comments are also welcome in the chat, not just questions. Awesome. So I love, me, I love me some back of the envelope math. So when I talked previously about thinking about it as a per employee, so you know, let's say you have 123 employees, you're saying, okay, we're going to spend $10, $10 a month for 12 months. That's a really low budget, as it turns out. It might seem like a lot of money. It's only 15,000, just shy of $15,000. So you say, okay, we can go up a little bit. What does it look like for the same amount of employees for $50 a month? Pretty dramatic increase, $74,000. Um, 
that's still significantly lower than the average New York South um, engineering salary. And that's based on built in NYC's um, statistics. Um, I don't know about all of you, most of the engineers I know make 150 plus USD. Um, so when you think about one engineer making $150,000 a year, or even $128,000 a year, compared to potentially the 78, 74,000, sorry, numbers get mixed up here, that you might spend on ERG budget, right there, you can say, okay, we have something that impacts all employees, that we know affects retention, that we know affects engagement, that we know affects belonging. Are we willing to you know, sacrifice maybe half of an engineer to give an ERG budget that affects everybody? And thinking about the impact of ERG budget versus one or half of an engineer, again, starting to pull that out and figure out how you're measuring that. Um, I generally say stay away from a per ERG model. Um, if you're gonna have a lump sum, you might have minimums and maximums. We expect ERGs to spend $5,000 over the course of the year, but there's a cap on $15,000 over the course of the year. And that because ERGs have different purposes. Um, in my previous organization, we had a disability, the quad um, account or ERG, and we were really about community. We were really about providing internal support. We did a couple of speaking events, but most of them were internal. We used, I think like $1,000 of our budget. That's just because that's who we were. That's who the group was. That's what was important to us versus our black culture ERG. Holy smokes, they went and blew us all out of the water. They spent a ton of money, but they provided so many speakers and resources and support and great events. And it was incredible. And that was what they felt like they wanted to do and needed to do. So knowing that different ERGs have different purposes, it's really hard to do a per ERG model. But again, going back to what are each ERG's goals and what money do they need to achieve those goals? Knowing that there's different reasons for each ERG. So budget, tracking, planning, and lead compensation. Um, so who should be involved in this conversation? Uh, ideally, it doesn't just fall to the ERG leads. Um, I have a lot of conversations where senior leaders in HR will say, well, tell the ERG leads to figure it out or the ERGs figure it out and come back to us with a proposal. Um, that isn't fair, frankly, um, or even lower, like lower level HR folks because they don't know unless, and hopefully this will help resources in the future, having this deck and having these templates will help, but ultimately it needs to start with the top and work down or meet in the middle. Because, I mean, I would go ahead and I'm pretty ballsy and I would immediately say, okay, I want 100,000 per ERG. C-suite is gonna say hell no to that most of the time, I assume. So they need to be there from the beginning and say, okay, we see a range from X to Y. We wanna know what is built out in them. Use the pillars, use these things. And again, next slides, we're gonna show you a little bit more. Um, but it's really important that, again, that intersectionality, diversity of level, diversity of department, you're really bringing a lot of people into this conversation, especially that first time. If it's not developed by more senior folks, they're not willing to join the conversation, whatever it is. Again, the ERG lead should come together. Audie, sorry, my dog thinks she's in charge of my cat and you might hear that behind me. Um, if there's not more senior folks, get the leads together. The ERG leads, brainstorm what you want brainstorm what's important or HR word them. Again, think about those goals and metrics. We wanna see our black population increase by 20%. What budget do you need to do that? Looking at then recruitment metrics, working backwards. And then when you do propose a budget to the senior leaders, you wanna tell a story. You know, that's about heartstrings. You know, you wanna talk about ways that connect to them. So Courtney, going back to your question, if they said, oh, we really wanna see, again, a more diverse workforce. When you build out your budget for ERGs, you can say, you know, this $20,000 goes back to your point, you know, Joe, John Doe, about wanting a more diverse workforce. And with this money, we're able to do that in these ways. You can make hypothesis, hypotheses, hypothesis, multi, you can make a hypothesis on what you're trying to do. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate in rea reality, but telling that story about how it will have impact, what is the outcome, bringing that emotional piece will really help. Um, if you're like me, I'm not very good at that. Bring in somebody you love from marketing. Bring in somebody who, who knows copy and creative from your external life or your internal corporate life to help you craft that story, craft that presentation, because that will go a long way and is really important as part of this budget process. Um, so thinking about tracking, um, this is in the worksheet that um, Dumebi is gonna send out later. Um, I split it up into two different ways, again, using the four C's and then using those, um, actually this is both the four C's. So through a matrix, so looking at, okay, the four C's on one side, the different ERGs, Excel you know, does addition for you. You can figure out what your totals are for each pillar and then for each ERG. Additionally, if you wanted to have subcategories on that, really simple, you just add new light items and then you can have the total be for all of career 
And so you can start to just do that math out. So after every spend, super easy for you to track it. Making it a little bit simpler to start out, you know, this is four columns. I would recommend having more than four columns for the second example. You might have notes, you might have um, point of contact to make the purchase. You might say a link to a receipt, so on and so forth. But saying what the item is, what ERG or ERGs participated in it, which pillar and what the spend was. And again, have math, have Excel do the math for you. So this is two ways of looking at just like a very basic budgeting option. Um, oh, apparently I did not do, I did not do this for the other one for tech, um, for tech brand and the other four categories, but same thing. You replace the four pillars with whatever your pillars are. Same thing if you wanna use them or variations, it's all Excel, super flexible. Um, if you're new at this and new at Excel or new at budgeting, this is gonna make you look hella professional when you share it with your leads, when you share it with your, you know, when you're building out, you can say, we expect the career to take this and here's four ways we expect it to happen. You build this out, somebody's gonna just trust you implicitly that you're like, okay, this person knows math, they work backwards, cool, beautiful. You know, salt bay kiss, it's gonna be great. So this is a really way to just simply, also for me, writing it down just helps me categorize it in my mind so it's not all cluttered. And so this is a great way to just put things on paper. ERG leads can create something like this. HR, DEI, anyone can. Um, and I would say just start something if you don't have anything now. Um, for lead compensation, again, this is going back to the report. I am staunchly in favor of compensating your ERG leads. It is a, um, there's a lot of conversation around this um, and there is a lot of dissenting voices that don't agree with me about compensating ERG leads. Again, just did some back of the envelope math. I think the first thing that you should know is you should pay your leads even if it's a small amount. It is extra work, period, end of story. Extra work deserves extra compensation. This should be a separate line item from the DEI budget or ERG budget. This should not be inclusive of it. Oftentimes I hear of organizations who include it in the ERG budget and tell ERG leads, you can spend that money on yourself or you can spend it on initiatives. And that's not fair. That's not fair to anybody. So making sure it's a separate line item from the EE, ERG or DEI budget, they shouldn't be forced to choose. And when you look at statistics, ERG leaders are historically underrepresented groups in the workplace. They are largely made up of minorities. When you think about how much, you know, the black woman makes compared to the white man, I believe it's, you know, 63 cents or something to the dollar of a white man. So if they're already, if these people are already working for significantly lower wages than what should be equitable, not paying them just increases that wage gap because they're doing more labor, it is unpaid, it is emotional in addition to the actual labor. So when you think about it, you're just creating more inequity within your organization by not compensating ERG leads, especially because the majority are underrepresented groups. In general, and probably very underrepresented in your workplace as well. If you look at, you know, all of, you know, your people of color, how many of them are leading a group? It's probably a lot of them. So again, back of the envelope math, you have one lead at a high point, maybe they do five hours a week, that's 260 hours a year. That's an annual bonus of $4,000. That's pretty piddly, but it's something. Um, and this is compensating at $15 an hour. I apologize, that's not in this. And if you're gonna pay them out quarterly, which I also recommend you do, don't do it annually, thousand dollars a quarter. That is no skin off of any company's back that I know of. And you multiply it, let's say eight leads at your organization, 40 hours, 280, $31,000. Again, when I think about how much a bonus a CEO makes or C-suite makes, or even a sales commission, 31,000 is barely anything. So when you think about compensating your leads, $15 an hour I did is because it should be the minimum wage in this country. It is the barest of minimum wages in my opinion. And in again, thinking about equity and thinking about poverty levels and thinking about who is doing this work, that is the minimum. Um, doing it hourly, I would say, assume they're doing X number of hours a week. If you say, hey, ERG leads, we expect you to do two hours a week and we're gonna pay you for two hours a week. I don't recommend asking them to log hours. It's just additional time where they could be working. Um, and it's a whole separate conversation, which I'm not gonna go into today because we don't have time, but expecting them to do their work if they're ERG leads, you can, in the report we talk about, should they be, if they are on a PIP or performance improvement plan, can they be lead? There's a lot of conversations that's in the report, but not for today. Um, Trav put in the chat, what do you think is an appropriately hour, hourly rate? Minimum $15 an hour is the appropriate hour, hourly rate. Um, you can do a lump sum, 100%. You might say, actually, we're going to estimate they're doing more than this. So we're going to give everybody a $5,000 annual lump sum split into quarterly is $1,250, I think, if I did math right. So, you know, you can do it that way too. 
if you really respect these leads, if you really respect the work they're doing, if you can prove that ROI additionally, pay them more than that. But again, if there is a starting point, start somewhere. If that starting point isn't $15 an hour, that's okay. Get that line item in and next year you can petition for more. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna jump off my soapbox for that one. So post-mortem, and I wanna make sure the time, good, we're making good time. Um, just like anything else, any project you do, anything, you know, thinking about product teams and tech teams especially, you always wanna do something afterwards to review what's going on. Um, Cam Camilla, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, I will answer your question in just a second. Um, so ERG budget or ERG post-mortem. So this can be happen quarterly, this can happen every half, this can happen annually, whatever cadence. Um, I suggest probably doing it at least every, twice a year, but maybe quarterly just to review. But thinking about what, what did the ERG accomplish? Did they achieve their goals? And how did they you know, compare to their metrics and how can they compare to their goals? And how did money support these goals? Do you need more money? Do you need less money in certain areas? Um, what additional resources would have been helpful? Money, time, leadership, not just compensation, but other pieces. Was a consultant support needed? Um, why or why not? A lot of people are, and I will caveat this, I am a consultant in this space, so I am for consultants supporting, but sometimes it is helpful. Sometimes to getting somebody in there to support. I actually go in with a number of organizations and lead their DEI committees um, and help them with that project management piece. Just having that extra support is a huge help in getting them to achieve their goals. You might not have somebody internally who can do that. You might have somebody internally who can do that. So just making sure that you're giving them the support that's needed. And then thinking about how initiative, each initiative could have been stronger or more engaging. So if you had a speaker, maybe only a third of the population of your company attended, how do you get it to be half next time? And thinking about, oh, well, we could have branded it better. Oh, we could have sent out a reminder email. Oh, that Zoom link was broken and we had to send out another one. So during this post-mortem will allow iteration on all of these pieces and a lot of groups to get better. It also will show when you talk to leadership and say, we did these five initiatives, four of them were raving successes and this one wasn't as good. And here's what we learned from it. It's a leadership opportunity for you to show to them what you're learning, how you're growing, and really, again, prove the value of these groups, which should show up in extra budget and extra compensation. For the question in the chat, how do you combat, though, if they do this work during work hours and they're already being compensated? Um, I am the kind of person, I will use myself as an example. I am the kind of person who does a 40 hour work week in 30 hours. That's just who I am. Um, so I have extra time, so to speak. Um, if you are giving the responsibility of this ERG lead work to people, it is the expectation that they get their standard work done and then do this ERG work. If they are not completing their quote nine to five work, then that's a different conversation. And you wouldn't say, hey, what is your blocker? Are you spending too much time on this? Can we talk about time management? Can we support you in some way? Ultimately, if they're not doing their job, that is a separate conversation to their work as an ERG and if they're compensated for ERG work. You know, also in this world that I live in, you know, when I was working full time, I was working after hours. I was working before 9 a.m. I was working all different times. So it was also like not standard. It's not like I was going into the office at 9 a.m. and leaving at 5 p.m. So it's, it's much harder in this world for a lot of folks to really solidify that. But ultimately, if they're not performing at their job, it is a different question than if they should be compensated for their lead work. If they're not performing at their job, maybe they shouldn't be a lead. And then you can remove that them from that place and elect a different lead but two different conversations entirely. Very difficult conversations. When I say this, it may sound very simple, but very difficult conversations to have. Yes, there's another question in the chat. What do you think is an appropriate hourly rate to pay ERG leads? Yep, minimum $15 an hour if you're going to go into hourly rate, minimum. But if you can't do that, that's okay, start somewhere. <laughs> there's like the, ex there's the hopeful minimum, and then there's the reality that not everybody's gonna be able to pay that, so start somewhere, get that line item in. Um, so what do you do with that postmortem? How do you actually turn it into something? I'm always a fan of creating something tangible, even if it's a digital tangible item, um, and to create the state of the ERG for your own organization. So thinking about that postmortem, how do you share that? How do you share that internally? How do you share that externally? Maybe you work with your, you know, your marketing team. You say, hey, we were able to increase our recruitment practices on underrepresented groups in the workplace by 30%, and here's how we did it. What does it mean for your organization to share the incredible work you're doing externally and allow other folks to do the same thing and mimic what you've done that's successful? How do you share those successes and challenges? It's more important than ever in, in this work, in the ERG work, to share what is working and what isn't working. Because if something is working, hell yeah, spread that to the world. If somebody else can copy it and work on that, that's brilliant. You want to share this. 
um, best practices and tips, share goals. Oftentimes ERGs really struggle with what goals and what metrics they should have um, and how you did on them or did not do on them. What were those blockers? Again, sharing all this information. Quotes from employees about the impact. Again, C-suite and leadership is often very far removed from the actual work that's being done on the ground with ERGs. So getting those quotes, getting those thoughts, if you are running an annual engagement survey or biannual engagement survey, ask your ERGs, hey, please, in the qualitative comments, write about the work that this ERG is doing, write about its importance, get that documented and share what your budget is. Um, when I did the, the state of the ERG report, I surveyed people, but I also asked in a couple of my HR Slack channels and I said, hey, what's going on? What's the reality of your budget? Talk to me about it because it doesn't matter if you share it, it's only going to create additional resources for folks who don't have budget or may want to increase their budget. Again, think about who you can work with internally, marketing, PR, you know, it is important. Everybody can be a thought leader in this space. You don't have to have it all together or all perfect to be a thought leader. Just sharing what is working and what isn't working is the place to start. Um, there is a lot of fog and opaqueness to this work. Again, the more we share, the more we can cut down on that, the more we can have equitable compensation, not just in ERG work, but across the board. Um, and then repeat this on a regular cadence. View an annual state of the ERG report people start to rely on it. You can start to share on it. You can start to anticipate it. Um, it's a really great way, again, to be a thought leader, but also for individuals creating these reports should go on your resume. If you're an ERG lead, put that on your LinkedIn, your resume, all of those things. It only shows what work you and your ER fellow leads can do. And with that, what do you have questions about? Anything I didn't cover that you want me to chat about, we have, it looks like 15 minutes or so. And if you have any additional questions, you can always reach out to me and do maybe we'll share my information. Radio silence. Feel free to post your questions in the chat or come off mute. Um, or if you message one of us anonymously as well, if you don't feel comfortable sharing in the chat. Is that a shrimp? Yes, it is a giant shrimp pillow. I got it in Thailand. It is the second thing I would take out of my house in case of a fire, the first one being my dog. It's very good for Netflixing and chilling by yourself. It's like a really great spooning buddy. Yes, you will get a copy of all of these slides. You will get a copy of the... Uh, Recording, that's what I'm looking for. Um, somebody raised their hands, but uh, Zoom will not let me see who it is. So I think it's Sabrina Brown. Yes, hi. Um, I am an ERG co-lead of our disability ERG within my company. And we're basically starting on the ground. Like we're, we have nothing. We're creating everything from the beginning. And I was curious, do you have like any advice for that? Like what type of advice do you have from someone starting completely from scratch? I would say just brainstorm with your leads or within your group. What impact do you want to have? Do you want awareness? Do you want education? Do you want um, just community? <laughs> so figuring out like what your impact is, and it doesn't have to be the forever impact. You could have a year long mission statement. And so just start thinking about the next six months. Don't think about forever and what impact. And then, okay, what can you do? Okay, we want to increase visibility, we want to share stories. So we're going to actually hold an internal panel about being disabled at this organization. That's something I've done at a private company. It takes an immense amount of trust. So that might not be a good way to start if there's not enough trust in the organization and psychological safety. Maybe you say, okay, we're going to look up all the disability related holidays and we're going to draft emails and work with HR to make sure that every single day and holiday has an email that goes out to the company with resources and disabled folks they can follow on Instagram or whatever. So also figuring out ways you can just have impact that and that's free, like that doesn't cost anything. So really going back to the start of what do you want to impact? And it may be one thing. You might have one goal and it is like cut and dry and black and white. That is awesome. Start there. Don't feel like you have to do anything extra or super taxing. A lot of times they're like, we have to impact everything. We have to touch everything. We have to be involved in everything and choose one or two things and start there. If you accomplish those or don't, you can say, okay, we're going to create another one or two things. We're going to create another one or two things and just build upon those successes and challenges to figure out those next steps. Um, I'm pretty sure, and do maybe, and Toby, if I'm incorrect in this, I'm pretty sure you have some ideas in some of your templates on your website. Um, so you'll get those resources and um, they have a ERG community. I would highly recommend joining it and saying, hey, like what are other groups doing? Um, one of the great things about ERGs is you can steal somebody's idea and it's awesome. There's no shame in stealing anybody else's idea because if it's working, hell yeah, take it for your own. You know, we had an internal newsletter at my previous company and like the disability group was like, hell no, we don't want any part in sending out a newsletter. We already have enough to deal with. But the women's group would send out this fabulous newsletter every month. And it was just like breathtaking. 
and that worked for them. If you had enough bandwidth, you could do something like that. Other groups started sending out monthly newsletters. Our ERD was like, nope. So that's also like, take what you want and leave the rest, but start with what impact you want to have on the rest of your people in your organization. Yeah, Make Sabrina. Sure that helps. Oh, sorry. No, sorry, just checking in. Um, this is Toby from Chesi as well. I was going to say we have, uh, we did a previous event on how to actually launch ERGs and it sounds like yours is kind of already launched, but still in like the early days of it. Um, so we'll just pass along the recording and comment at some of the templates and stuff from that as well. So just look out for an email from us after this event. Um, in the chat, I saw Anika, you said, what are some suggestions for compensating leads in ways that are not financial? Um, there's a whole bunch in the report, again, not to PR you too much on that report. I'm very excited about it. It's very long, but it's very informative. Um, there's a lot of different ways. I think professional development is generally the best practice one. Um, because it's a way that they can grow and learn. That being said, most of the time you spend money in professional development. For me, cash is king. I would rather give that cash that you would spend on that professional development to the individuals. You don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know if there's student loans. You don't know if they're caretakers. You don't know if there's medical bills. Again, there's arguments to be made. I'm happy to come into your organization and talk with your leaders or talk with you one-on-one -on -one or any of you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but there is, you know, uh, professional development, swag, mentorship, meeting with C-suite, like having a regular meeting with a C-suite officer is a great way to get them exposure. Um, I can't think of any more at the top of my head, but Anika, I do have them and I will share them. Um, and then Nicole mentioned, how can you help ERGs plan for their budget for the upcoming year? Same thing to Sabrina's question, start with the impact. What impact do they wanna have? Do that post-mortem on this year first? And then say, okay, like what worked well? What can we repeat? You can do the same event year after year, as long as it's successful, like run with it. Um, and then say, okay, again, work backwards. We want to do impact on community, external community. So we want to host um, a lunch and learn for the external community and host, you know, folks from our organization about, you know, coding when, coding when black, you know, and host a bunch of organizations to come in. Maybe you want to do a recruitment event. So then thinking about the year ahead. And again, a year is really hard. So something you can do is think about the first six months. And then just say, okay, we're going to just double that because we're going to do similar stuff in the next six months because a lot of things can happen in six months. There is no perfect science. So doing six months at a time, but doubling that for the year. And um, yeah, I think those are all the questions. Um, I'm actually going to put, and I'm going to put it in the chat, my booking link. Um, if anybody has any questions, um, something I didn't tell you to maybe, but I'll do on here. Um, if anybody wants to have a free half hour chat, talk about ERGs, talk about DEI, feel free to book through that time. And I'm happy to just do a coaching call with you and talk through things. Um, if there's a new ERG that forms mid-year, how do you best manage the budget for them? <sighs> Courtney, you're throwing the hard hitting questions at me. Um, you might want to talk about having like a surplus fund or a bonus fund in case that happens. Hopefully you have an idea that there might be like rumblings of a new ERG before you form the budget. So maybe there's padding. Oftentimes you'll say, okay, well, we're going to add extra 10% of this budget in case something happens as bonus budget. We're gonna tell the ERGs they have 9,000, but really they have 10,000 in case something happens. You can have a little slush fund at the end, but there might not be an answer. You might have to go to all your ERGs and say, hey, ERGs, there's a new one forming. Will each of you give 10,000 from your current budgets to, to this one? So again, there's no necessarily one right answer. You might say for the first six months, we want you to focus on internal events that are you know, without budget or with limited budget. That's a totally fair request if it's a new ERG as well. But yes, feel free to use that booking link, grab a half hour with me. Happy to talk through this. Clearly I nerd about this topic really, really hard. Um, check out Chezzy. It's an awesome platform, really great resource. They have a ton of resources and templates. You're gonna get this recording. You're gonna get these slides. Um, I also have a number of, oh, I'm not presenting anymore. I was clicking through my sec. There's an addendum with like five or six additional slides with additional links and resources. So hopefully that's additional great content for you. And this work is hard. So kudos for doing this. Kudos for being a part of it. Kudos for listening and cheering your folks on. Um, it is not easy. It is so important. It is so vital. Um, and thank you for listening. And that will thank pass it. Yes. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you all for joining. Like Jess said, this is important work and we commend you all for taking the initiative within your companies. Um, like Jess mentioned, we do have a community for ERG leads and DEI managers, and I will send each of you an invite to join that. Um, feel free to ask any outstanding questions that you have in there. We also have some resources and templates that you guys can utilize. Um, and again, we will send out the slides, this recording, um, as well as a budgeting worksheet. So if you're just getting started with your budgets or you're trying to restructure your budget, um, we did create a worksheet to help you kind of work through that 
um, and roll it out to the rest of your ERGs. So thank you again. Um, it was great having y'all here and have a great rest of your day. Cool. Bye, thank you. Thank um, you.